About a month ago, I decided to see if this new 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro could make me throw my beloved Windows desktop off my balcony. Needless to say, I've been sort of stuck and kind of tied to the whole Windows desktop computer setup for pretty much my entire career. I've had a lot of kind of personal fears and hesitations with adapting a laptop into my workflow as my full-time workstation. But I've now been using this thing 100% exclusively for my workflow for the last month or two. So let's go ahead and talk about and break down how it's gone, any major issues, annoyances, performance, and side-by-side all of that stuff that you guys have been waiting to see. Let's quickly talk about the PC itself. I, I love this thing. It's not the fastest or like the most built out, you know, supercomputer, but it's no joke. I mean, it's powerful enough to handle everything I throw at it. It has semi outdated hardware, but what's interesting to me and kind of prompted this whole switch and, and creating these videos is that in today's current market with computer parts, it would take a pretty significant amount of money to upgrade and have any real performance improvements. So this is what the desktop is up against. This is the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro with the 32 core GPU, 64 gigabytes of unified memory and a two terabyte SSD. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is a side by side render or export test with both the machines. The project we're gonna be working with is my latest YouTube video, which if you haven't seen it, be sure to click the little card up over here. It's a video I did about journaling. This is a roughly 10 minute timeline. It's mostly Sony A7S III, uh, 4K, 24, 10-bit, 422, H.265. So this is really compressed footage. It's what I shoot with exclusively for YouTube just because of the space savings, uh, smaller file sizes, but it's really hard for computers to encode and decode. So I think this is a good test to put these two machines up against. This is a pretty packed timeline. We have various amounts of mixed media uh, titles over overlays, things like that. When it comes to the color grading of this video, I would definitely say it's uh, on the more complex side. Uh, a good amount of nodes, uh, lots of OFX, various power windows. This is definitely gonna be pretty taxing on the system. After this first test, I'm gonna show you guys just how big of a difference it makes to do a much simpler color grade. But for this first test, this is exactly how I grade pretty much all of my YouTube videos. So this is the perfect baseline in my mind. So what I'm gonna do is export both of these videos to an H.265 MOV file. I'm gonna be doing these tests with the MacBook on battery power just to make things interesting. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get these two queued up. And three, two, one, go. All right, off we go. Okay, so we're back. The video on the Windows desktop exported in 13 minutes. 19 seconds and we have 11 minutes and 34 seconds on the MacBook. Again, this is running on battery power. That's a pretty impressive difference considering that this is a fully built out desktop versus a laptop. Now, as I mentioned before, the amount of grading that I have in this project really, really does slow it down. So I've created a duplicate timeline of this exact YouTube video uh, with a much more simplified color grade on each of the shots. We have four nodes here, very, very basic sort of balance, contrast, saturation, HSLs, a conversion LUT, and some sharpening. This is like very standard, I think what most people would kind of be doing. And three, two, one, go. And right away, uh, I think you'll be able to see this is rendering significantly faster. Real quick, while uh, this video is finishing exporting up on the Windows PC, it's already done on the MacBook, maybe I'll tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Cuts. If you guys are a fan of minimal and clean styled clothing like myself, you know, a clean black long sleeve like this fits incredible. Cuts has some of the best stuff in the game. They make amazing t-shirts and hoodies and a ton of incredible colors that have different seasonal drops. They also have outerwear, bottoms, sweatpants, you name it, Cuts has you covered for basically any occasion. Video just finished, but we're almost done here. If you guys are following me over on Instagram, you'll know that Cuts is basically all I ever wear because 
I love the style and aesthetic and all the amazing colors that they have. So if you guys are interested in checking out some of their stuff, you can save 15% off your order if you use code RyanMCOW at checkout, or you can just click the link down below. I gotta give a huge thanks to Cuts for supporting the channel, keeping me clothed for the last year or so, and making a lot of these videos possible. So thanks Cuts. Click the link down below. Okay, so the test is done. And uh, like I mentioned before, it made a huge difference to simplify the color grade on this project. And I think this is a better example and more comparable to some of the videos that you guys have probably watched about these machines. On the PC, we have four minutes, 31 seconds. On the MacBook, we have three minutes and 24 seconds. That's that's just mind blowing. And it's at 18% battery life. The likelihood is that this thing was probably in low power mode. If you guys don't know, you can actually change the power mode of these MacBooks in the system preferences when you're on battery life versus connected to the power adapter. Uh, before we move into the next test, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. I wanna charge it up just a little bit. So for this next export test, I wanna pull up the project that I shot for Prada just a few months back. If you guys haven't seen that, I shot a cool little film for the release of one of their new men's fragrances. So again, click the little card up here to go check that out. This is a roughly, uh, let's see, three minute timeline. This project was shot pretty much entirely on the Red Komodo in 6K RAW. And we also have a little bit of clips from the Sony FX6. This is a pretty tough project. Here's the thing. As you just saw before, uh, the amount of grading and sort of the complexness of what's going on in each of the shots, this shot, the no tree is an absolute mess, but I mean, uh, there's just, there's a ton going on. Not to mention, we also have some group post clip effects. I think you'll see that this project, it takes a sec to render out, even though it's only three minutes long. There is a few sound effects on this project that are just randomly missing somehow, but ignore that. Okay, and here we go, three, two, one. Okay, so wow, uh, the PC finished out at 16 minutes, 47 seconds on the MacBook, 10 minutes and 15 seconds. That is a pretty impressive difference. Wow. What matters to me so much more than how quickly a video will render out is the real world performance. Like how well does it scrub? Am I able to play back a timeline in full resolution? I don't wanna have to deal with proxies. I don't wanna have drop frames. I don't have to turn off any effects while I'm editing. I want something that's going to allow me to as fluidly as possible get my ideas out and onto the screen. So again, I have the journaling video project opened up here. So just to show you guys, this is a 4K resolution timeline. Now, most of the time you wouldn't wanna do this. In order to get the best editing performance, you can drop that resolution down to 1080p, but then export at 4K. But this is playing back in 4K here. So let's slide the playhead around and you know, this is pretty good. It's not perfect. It's dropping a little bit of frames as we scrub. Let's go ahead and go to a random point on the timeline here, maybe where we got a bunch of titles popping up. And let's hit play and see if we get full playback. There we go, 24 frames per second. No dropped frames. We got some titles coming up here, so this is gonna be interesting. Oh, stutters a little bit. Picks back up though. Motion animations working smoothly. Let's go to the intro. Oh, a little stutter in the beginning and it picks up. So this may not seem all that impressive. Like, okay, cool, full resolution, 4K playback. But keep in mind, like I showed you guys, there's a pretty heavy grade on all of these shots. I'll pull up the duplicate timeline that has the simplified color grade and we'll try the same test. Again, starting from the intro, boom instantly full playback let's go ahead and scrub around much more responsive yeah this is like no drop frames whatsoever oh gotta get the mic in here a little bit more okay so this is the timeline that has the complex grade let's go ahead and scrub around immediately not too too responsive it's not terrible but let's go ahead and start off the intro and just hit play Ooh, it's dropping frames, it's struggling to keep up here. We're at 24 now, dropping frames there. Let's go ahead and switch over to the duplicate timeline, simple color grade, scrub around. Uh, this is noticeable. This actually definitely does not seem as responsive as the MacBook, so that's, that's interesting. All right, let's go ahead and hit play at the beginning. 
Yep, seeming to play back fine. It's not dropping frames in the same spots that it was initially, not bad. As mentioned in my initial video with the Switch, uh, I did have some pretty big concerns with long-term stability of the whole system. Issues with external hard drives, I am still using those. Connecting, disconnecting cables frequently, coming in to dock it here at the desk. I've been honestly shocked at how rock solid the whole system feels. No issues with hard drives. The system wakes nearly instantly when you open the lid, which I don't know, something about that is just really satisfying. Pretty regularly, I found myself going nearly the entire day on a single charge, maybe plugging it in like one time if I was doing a lot of rendering or exporting, but easily being able to get a solid five to six plus hours of intensive editing, which is, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> the screen size, considering it's a laptop, hasn't felt restrictive at all, almost to the point that I've lately kind of preferred working outside of the office. The keyboard and trackpad are truly, I think, probably the best I've ever used on a laptop. I could honestly go on and on about how enjoyable it's been to work on this device because I don't know, frankly, it, it kind of boggles me because I've never been so impressed in so many aspects of adapting a new piece of equipment into my workflow. This MacBook has pretty much proven to me that the days of the desktop, the custom PCs are kind of gone. Uh, that comes with a pretty big asterisk, but flat out, this is just a professional device and really deserves the badge of MacBook Pro. But the whole point of this video is not to convince you guys that this is what you need, you know, the M1 Max, in order to create good videos. The truth is, there are plenty of videos out there that show that the base model M1 MacBooks are more than capable for, I think, 90% of creators. And frankly, that's just kind of amazing and insane to think about that these base model Apple MacBooks are capable of being like more than good enough editing workstations for creative professionals. Of course, if this is your full-time thing and you want to maximize your time and efficiency and have the fastest, best performance, then by all means, go buy a spec'd out model. All that aside, I'm happy and excited to now officially say that this MacBook Pro is going to be my full-time workstation. So back to uh, my PC going off the balcony. Yeah, probably not throwing it off the balcony, but I'll probably end up kind of rebuilding it into a smaller form factor, smaller case, keep it around. There's some PC games and stuff that I like to play. It's always kind of nice to have a Windows computer for that. Unless somebody maybe wants to buy it, comment down below. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You want to see more computer stuff. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.